Fox Box cats are free. Yay! It's all the enthusiasm I've been mustering at the moment. Um, so, today I want to talk about um, where wildfire is going from here. Um, the purpose of wildfires to help churches grow and eventually plant churches, plural, and to, and to help those churches plant churches, and also to make disciples who make disciples, who make disciples who make disciples. So the first step in that is course being a Christian which we've just covered with the Beatitudes and the Beatitudes also have to do with um, making disciples because it's, it's kind of the foundation of what it looks like to be a Christian so whenever you make a disciple then like one of the first things you should do is go with the Beatitudes the way we just did and explain how that cycle works. Now, in order to make disciples, the first thing you want to make disciples or to grow a church, the first thing you, the first thing is you need to desire to make disciples and you need a desire to grow. And I know that seems simple. A lot of people say they want the growth. A lot of churches say they want the growth, but a lot of churches don't want the mess of of going at church. They just like the idea of going at church. But then you have then they, they, they don't want uh, the sound of children running down the halls because, you know, we don't want them running down the halls. But, um, heaven forbid. Uh, but you know what? Kids that have never been to church, they, they're going to run down the halls. And you need to be okay with that. Until, until you can teach them otherwise. But as you're teaching... As, as you're teaching people the Christian way of life, you need to do it with, with grace and not like, I can't believe you just ran down the halls, or I can't believe you said the word fart, or what, what, whatever. You know, it, um, you can't people you can't expect people who've never been to church. There's you can't expect question. people. You can't expect people who've never been to church to act like they've been going to church their whole lives. It's just not realistic. Some, you know, as you as you bring the unchurched into your church, brand new believers, as it were, you might end up with a drunk guy coming into your house, into your church. Or homosexuals or whatever and while all these things are wrong you need to find a, a, a graceful way to go about it so it's not about you're going to hell because you're gay it's more about Jesus would never say it like that okay he would be like there, there's a better way, and this is why. A lot of people believe that homosexuality is a sin, but they can't tell you why it's a sin. They just know that they don't like you because you're gay, which is not okay. Because yes, is, is homosexuality a sin? Of course it is. So is lying and adultery and all, any number of things. To ignore Sam in vain, you know, there's a lot of things that were sins. 
they do one of them like a jihad just as fast as the other one. But we like to pick on certain things. So, if they're, if they're coming to church and they're trying to change, let's not rush them out the door with our judgment. show them the love of Christ and be gracious while they're trying to make that transition to becoming a better person. And of course, at some point, you know, when they become Christians, there should absolutely be an expectation of better behavior. And the Holy Spirit is going to work with them on that as well. So that's the first thing we, we got to work on. Um, so the, the next step is sharing the gospel, which, which this whole next series is going to be about. Um, so part of it's going to be just sharing the gospel one on one, because. Um, stats say that 83% of people will not darken the door of a church unless invited by a person. Not by an ad or some kind of social media. It needs to be a person they know and they respect inviting them to church and being Jesus to them which means you need to like, act like a Christian when you're out in public you can't be one thing in church and be something else in public people will, people will pick that up pretty quickly and if you if you if you know if you're different if you're no different than anyone else well, why would they change to be like you So part of evangelism is just being genuine and being godly in the, in your workplace. Now there is a place for social media, and we're going to work, we're going to talk about that as well, um, and. And marketing in general. Now, most pastors, when they go to seminary, they don't learn about marketing. You know, when I, when I went to seminary, they didn't talk about it much, if at all, that I can recall. And I, m most seminaries don't talk about marketing. But you know what? That, that's how the word gets out. When, uh, when people ask where, where Jesus lived and how he lived, he said, come and see. So, it's, it's important to get the word out and to be where the people are. You know, Jesus told Peter and Andrew and James and John, he's going to make the fishers of men. In order to go fishing, you don't just wait for the fish to come to you, especially if you're on land. Um, you know, we all want to be fishers of, of men, but some of us apparently want the fish to just jump into the boat with the heads already cut off, cooked and served on uh, a slab of cedar. With the, with the vegetables already prepared and garnishments and a nice cool drink and all that just all of that just jump out of the water into the boat which is on land because we don't want to actually go to where the people are 
man. I, I've been fishing a few times. So I've never seen that happen. The fish usually never jump into the boat. And if they do, their heads are still attached. And they're still alive. And they smell like fish. So there's some cleaning that needs to be involved there. And um, if, if a headless fish jumps into your boat, you, you will have some problems. There's something weird going on there and you don't want to eat that fish. <laughs> so, um, so the, the lesson here is we need to go where the people are. You need, so you need to get on social media, which is where the people are. If you don't know where to find them and be in their space um, another thing you have to do is actually get out in the neighborhoods and prayer walk now when we're talking about prayer walking There's a, there's a right and wrong way to do it. No. So when, when you're prayer walking, you don't just walk around and pray. Um, it's good to say that, that we, we fight against principalities and powers of the air in different towns, different countries different, just different areas it could even be different from, from neighborhood to neighborhood there are, there are different spirits um, that that rule that area and cause the problems that, that are there sometimes it's pride, sometimes it's drugs alcoholism and there's all, all, any number of things so when you're walking through a neighborhood praying and you want to do this as a, as a group especially with a dangerous neighborhood you need strength in numbers you need to be Praying, you need people with a gift of discernment to kind of feel out what, what's going on in this neighborhood and pray against it. Our prayers can pull down strongholds. In order to pull down strongholds, you need to be in the neighborhood where the strongholds are to pray them down. And that's powerful. So, Wildfire Media Solutions is going to be uh, an all service uh, operation. We're going to do a sermon series about well, the three attitudes, like I just, like I just did. The, the, the next series is going to be on sharing, the, sharing Jesus without fear and we're working on getting William Fay to, to work with me on that because it's, that, that's his app we're also going to, I'm also going to uh, have a, a, a media marketing uh, solution it has to be tailored to, to the church and, and the church's budget but what will also help with a lot of things from building out social media platforms to um, building out uh, a, a unified message across 
all of those platforms as well as you know t-shirts stickers um, signs re reaching out to to uh, a certain radius of, of your community how to how to uh, set up readers in the parking lot have have like have people out in the streets like young people like teenagers and college age people out of, out at the street with spinning signs or something to, to bring people in excuse me just um hit the media in every angle and measurable in, in your area that might so it could be a, it could be a lot of things based on what's available in your area at some point your church is going to be ready to start planting other churches um, it's recommended that at 80% capacity, when your church is at 80% capacity, um, which means like if you have in your in, in your uh, in your worship services, if you have a, a capacity of a thousand, or let's back that off. Say so your church has capacity of 100 people, and yet you regularly have 80 or more people in each in that service. Then it's time to expand because if it comes if you, if you had 100 percent, which is awesome. The problem is parking lots full, and people are. Not stopping if they have to find a parking space, they have to, if they're parking in the grass and stuff like that. At some point, they're going to be like, This is too busy for me. So, you, you need to have space to grow. So, what you want to do is look at the demographics of who's coming to church from where. And there's just certain pockets uh, in outlying areas. You want to plant churches in those pockets where there's a lot of people coming from 15, 20 miles away. That's a good place to, to plant a new church. There's different ways to do that. Some churches, like Elevation or Passion Church, or uh, there's one in Dallas that. It's, it's more like it's, it's another campus but you're you're watching the same pastor the same worship team from the main church at the other place you're not actually having a new lead pastor and, and a new worship team and all that having to be built out because you you're watching the same worship service as everyone else is at the main campus on big screens that's one way to do it or you could actually plant a new church where they have their own name their own pastor and all that kind of stuff that takes a little bit more money because you're paying for new salaries but you still got to be you set to hire a pastor to oversee those people and to pray for them and minister to their needs and you're going to have more deacons and stuff we just will have that marquee pastor like Louis Giglio or whoever. So, Wildfire Media Solutions also wants to help with acquiring new real estate for that purpose. And sometimes you might find a space that's bigger than what you need. You have some flex space. There's a lot of things you can do with flex space. Uh, 
an associate of mine I talked to yesterday was talking about how, you know, some people, they had a truck come in and fill a, a gym up with about two feet of sand and they'd have beach volleyball right there and then a few days later it suck up all that sand but by Sunday morning there's not a speck of sand left in there and you had church like like nothing ever happened and, you know yeah that takes a little bit of money you could, you could also have uh, a rock climbing wall you could have all kinds of activities for young people to come to and that's a good place for kids to have a safe space to 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 exercise and to meet to be social without having to deal with drugs and alcohol and all all that stuff that's going on outside. So there's, there's all kinds of things you can do with your flex space. Um, have a Christian bookstore or something like that. So as a new church, planting a new church, you might not have the resources for that. So we, we could, Waterfront Media Solutions could buy the build, buy the building, lease it to the church on Sundays and Wednesdays or wherever, whenever you're going to have services. Maybe you want to do it on Saturday or have a Shabbat service if you have a Jewish community. But on the other days of the week, the space could be used for other things. And that way, you're saving money without having to buy or lease that space for every day. You, you're only leasing that space for Sundays and Wednesdays. But if Wildfire Media Stations owns that space, you don't have to worry about getting kicked out of that space and having to find a new spot losing some people because you're like oh no where are we going to meet now or trying to cram everybody back into the church after you've already expanded again so I also have uh, numerous IT starts so we can help new churches set up uh, computer networks for Wi-Fi security cameras, all that kind of stuff set you up so that you have enough bandwidth to manage everything you need to do what you want to do. If you got a live stream, you need more bandwidth than what a lot of churches have. And if you're going to live stream, you need to have a different um, router for your you're outbound than for the typical Wi-Fi because tra traffic 100 people in there trying to use the same Wi-Fi you're using all the bandwidth people doing whatever they're doing while you're trying to live stream that, that doesn't work so you need to have different channels for different purposes and the channel you have for your live stream needs to not be advertised to anyone else. There should be a separate channel so that you don't have to compete with anybody else. So that's where we're going with Wildfire Media Solutions. putting together a, a team of real estate investors to, to help make um, that possible. We'll be working, we're also building out uh, a media marketing team to help churches learn how to market and maintain their social media platforms. We're going to have a sermon series to help you think about how to be prepared to deal with 
unbelievers coming into your church and how to deal with them correctly so you're not running them off. So this is just a, a few things that we're looking at doing to be a total package of planting new churches, sharing the gospel, and making this available to any size church that is passionate about winning lost souls and planting new churches and spreading the kingdom of God. It's not just for the mega churches. So, anyway, so thanks for watching, and we're going to really get into um, why it is everyone's responsibility to share the gospel next week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Thank you.